I'm Peter Lillington, I'm from the University of Kent and my role in this project is to investigate the storage technologies that are available and what one, which ones best fit the requirements of the project. In the original EDSAC, mercury delay lines were used, a variety of sizes, this is a very small one, from the original EDSAC machine. This stored numbers as a sequence of bits. Bits came on an electrical cable at this end and excited a quartz crystal which produced a series of sound pulses travelling down a column of mercury to another crystal where they generated an electrical signal that was fed out. A number could be stored for as long as needed by going repeatedly round and round this loop. Now these systems, particularly the larger ones, this is only a very small example, proved in practice to be rather unreliable because it was difficult to make this assembly of the mercury and the crystals in it sufficiently reliable. And there are also issues nowadays about the health and safety aspects of using large amounts of mercury in the machine. So for both these reasons, we feel we cannot replicate this in quantity. Therefore, we looked at other storage technologies. We therefore decided that we will use nickel delay lines in the EDSAT replica project. This is an example of a nickel delay line. The general principle is the same in that a series of pulses to store a number circulate repeatedly. But here, the bit stream is used to excite some nickel tapes so that, so that these generate sound waves which are then transferred to a longer steel wire that circulate around and are picked up by another coil unit on the back. This is much more robust and proved more reliable than mercury and very soon displaced mercury in the early computers. The project intends to use nickel delay line for the main storage in the EDSAC replica. However, in, although there are many papers from the time which talk about the technology, many of the skills needed to construct this kind of unit uh, are no longer available. And we need a large number of units of sizes and dimensions which are not precisely those of the samples we have available from other machines. Therefore, we find it necessary to do some prototyping to see whether we can recreate the technology used in the local delay lines. This is a proof of concept prototype showing the same principles as the, other, as the commercial nickel delay line. This unit here consists of two coils driving two nickel, nickel wires, a bias magnet and a rubber pad to, to prevent reflections at the ends of the wire. These are the essential features of a transducer, although the ones in practical delay lines are better engineered and smaller than this one which has been built in order to determine whether we have the right parameters and the right design ideas for the input-output transducer coils here and here, and whether we get enough signal passing along these delay line wires. If this proves successful, we will then go on to try to um, replicate the technology in a practical sized unit, uh, which will be suitable for use in the replica. This unit is our first attempt and it does work in that we can see pulses being delayed for about 20 microseconds passing between the, the two coil units. Um, however, it is not uh, sufficiently sensitive and not sufficiently robust to use as a basis on its own. We need to do a lot more work finding the right combination of component sizes and detailed designs to make the thing work in practice in the replication.